Tonight, Apple wins, trolls lose. Mt. Gox files for bankruptcy and a lack of trust at the RSA Security Conference. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 34 for Friday, February 28th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to 50-plus job boards with one click. Try ZipRecruiter for four days free. Now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. I'm Father Robert Ballister. Let's get right to the tech feed. Apple has been awarded victory over IPCOM, a non-practicing entity, also known as a patent troll, by a Mannheim, Germany court. IPCOM had demanded $2.17 billion from Apple for their alleged infringement of two patents that IPCOM had acquired from Bosch in 2007. IPCOM also asserted their patent claims dealing with determining priority for calls on a mobile network against HTC, and they lost in the same decision. Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy protection today, then promptly got sued. A Bitcoin exchange that once handled more than 80% of all Bitcoin transactions Mt. Gox has admitted that they've lost almost 850,000 Bitcoins, nearly a half a billion dollars worth, and about one twenty-fifth of all the Bitcoins that will exist ever. Hackers took advantage of a flaw in the company's transaction network, siphoning Bitcoins unnoticed for years. A man named Gregory Green, who estimated his Bitcoin losses at $25,000, filed a class action lawsuit against the Japan-based Mt. Gox in the U.S. District Court of Chicago. Green accused Mt. Gox of failing to provide its users with the level of security protection for which they paid. Both U.S. and Japanese prosecutors have launched investigations into the shutdown and bankruptcy of Mt. Gox. The U.S. is reportedly considering the regulation of virtual currencies like Bitcoin. Apple has confirmed that their Apple TV boxes are now on sale. According to 9to5Mac, Apple Store employees were told that beginning today, if someone purchases an Apple TV, they will get a $25 iTunes gift card. This promotion apparently will end on March 5th. Recently, there have been unconfirmed reports of new hardware coming for the Apple TV, including everything from an integrated Airport Express, an app, a built-in tuner, and a revamped interface. For years, Apple TV has lagged behind their more popular products like the iPhone, iPad, and Mac computers. Yet last year, the little black box earned the company $1 billion, moving CEO Tim Cook to tell shareholders, quote, it's a little more difficult to call it a hobby these days. The Secret Service is reportedly investigating a possible security breach at Sears. Sears is working with a digital forensics company and cooperating with the U.S. Secret Service to determine the source and extent of an incursion on their network. This proactive stance on announcing a breach and investigation comes amidst similar breaches at Target and Neiman Marcus, both of whom have been criticized for their slow disclosure of their respective breaches. Coming up, Google Search is called the Internet's biggest content scraper site. But joining us next is Ian Thompson, reporter for The Register. He'll tell us about the fireworks this week from the RSA Internet Security Conference. But first, are you hiring? Do you know where you can post your job to find the best candidates? With so many job boards, who knows which one will produce the best talent? If you want to fill that position fast with the perfect candidate, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can with ZipRecruiter.com. You post to 50-plus job sites at once with a single click. ZipRecruiter also posts your jobs on social networks like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. ZipRecruiter will add your company logo and colors to make your job pages an extension of your business. Post once and watch the qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. You screen them, rate them, then hire the right person fast. Try ZipRecruiter and find out why they've been used by over 100,000 businesses. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. Let's get to it. Ian Thompson, a reporter with The Register. Ian, you are at the RSA Security Conference in San Francisco. It's a cryptography and information security related conference. And one of the hot topics has been the weaponization of networks, specifically the rise of the advanced persistent threat 
and the rush by companies to defend against an onslaught of data theft from their networks. How have vendors and presenters at the conference handled either side of that conflict? Well, it's it's always been, you know, threats have always been out there for the network. But what we're seeing now is really very new types of threats uh, using old techniques, but in large bundles and some really interesting new ones that are getting into networks and causing security managers a huge amount of headaches. And basically, it's everyone is trying point solutions, but nobody has quite worked out how you can get the level of security and detection of any kind of vulnerability and also how to deal with it afterwards. Right. Speaking of dealing with it afterwards, is there a lot of talk at the conference of how you deal with breaches, either from the vendors or the presenters? What do you do once you realize that your network has had an intrusion? Well, I mean, there's two, uh, there's two facets to that. From the technology side, um, there's quite a few companies sort of offering after the event forensics uh, services so you can see where they've been and what they've taken. Um, but there's also the social side. As, as you mentioned earlier with Sears, they're, they're getting their disclosure in early. And that's something which is hurting a lot of companies in that if they have a breach and they're refusing to admit that they've got a problem, then that makes the impact of that so much worse on their business. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. RSA is still under the gun for allegedly cooperating with the NSA to weaken their security solution, reportedly taking $10 million to implement a flawed random number generator in their encryption products. Is this breach of trust evident at the conference? Oh, very much so. It's the topic that everyone's talking about in the bars after the after the show has ended. I mean, RSA came out fighting on this one. Art Corbiello, the president, came, gave in his opening keynote, which is usually a bit of a snooze fest, he came out very strongly saying, you know, this is our position. We did nothing wrong. We followed the, the uh, NIST standards to, to the letter. And as soon as there was a problem, then, you know, we, we went out and fixed it. But I've got to say, they've lost an awful lot of trust. There's certainly a lot of people were calling for boycotts, and indeed there was a, a, a rebel conference going on. And I think they've they've lost a, an awful lot of credibility, and it's going to be a very long time before they get that back. Yeah. Well, Ian, there's been some talk about whether or not RSA can actually weather this storm. Some people are saying, look, in the security game, once you lose trust, you don't get it back. What's your thought? Being at the conference, seeing what's going on, actually experiencing the protests, do you think that RSA will survive? I don't think they've been fatally hit. I think they've taken a massive hit in both in reputation and in terms of the number of people who would come to them for their services. But I don't quite think it's fatal. I mean, basically, the, the, they have faced a problem which a lot of a lot of security vendors are, are dealing with at the moment. And there are an awful lot of companies that have cooperated with the NSA. And as Bruce Schneider put it, if you're going to bring up a list of companies to boycott, then RSA is way down there, you know, ahead of people like AT&T and Verizon. I think they will survive, but I think it's going to be a very long, hard slog before they get their reputation in any way back to the shape it was in before the news broke. Ian Thompson from The Register, thank you very much for joining us. You can find him at Ian Thompson. Good day. Thank you. Now, Google announced a new tool yesterday called the Scraper Report. Scraping is when someone steals your content and passes it off as their own in order to sell ads. A Google Scraper Report lets legit content creators report scraper sites so that they won't rank high in Google search results. There's just one problem. According to digital marketing expert Dan Barker, Google is the Internet's biggest scraper. Barker posted a screenshot on Twitter demonstrating his point. When you search for the words scraper site, the output shows Google's scraped copy above the Wikipedia search result. The tweet, the tweet is quickly becoming a massive viral hit, and it's true. Google routinely grabs content from sites like Wikipedia, then displays it out of context in search results, above the original source content site. In Google's defense, they do link to the original source, and they don't try to pass it off as their own. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.